The East African Court of Justice is a treaty-based judicial body of the East African community tasked to ensure adherence to law in interoperation and application of compliance within the Treaty of the 1999. Also known as the Trade Court, since inception a decade and a half ago, the institution, which is an organ of the East African community, has, albeit with challenges, been able to at least under 123 cases a number of tax-related disputes. It is made up of two divisions, a first instance division and an appellant division. Justice Herald Nsekala is the president of the region's trade court. Our court is basically a trade court. That's what it is. I mean, that's what the East African, the East African community is all about. It is about uh, trade. So ideally, ideally the references which should come before us should be trade. Related. Among others, a partner state may make a reference to the court if it considers that another partner state or an organ or institution of the community has failed to fulfill an obligation or has infringed the provision of the treaty. Since uh, these protocols are being implemented, what we have now is the customs union and the common market protocol. And even the common market protocol now is still under implementation. The private sector across the entire EAC needs to reinforce their understanding of the protocols already signed so as to ease their businesses. In ensuring a smooth engagement among the public and private sector across the entire economic bloc in the quest towards an effective integration around trade and commerce, the head of the East African Court says it needs to be fully utilized. Many people, many East Africans, uh, we have gone around uh, for the past three, four years trying to explain to them our, what we are supposed to be doing, but uh, still not many people, even those you'd expect to know, do not know that you know, there is a court which is uh, mandated to deal with certain issues under the treaty. However, still on the legal front, the East African Law Society argues that mechanisms that can support their members in the region to fully take up business opportunities need to be taken into account. Estimates very recently indicated that about 87% of all legal fees from development organizations like the World Bank and that, that come to Africa actually pay to offshore law firms. We're talking about 87%. So you find that a number of international law firms are already creating networks across Africa. So while we are saying that we are going to be protectionist and stick to uh, our countries, our, our jurisdictions, you will find that we are fighting for about just 13 percent. The Regional Law Society adds that harmonizing of standards within the service sector, such as legal practices, would benefit the existing human resource and further development. You will find that a lawyer in Rwanda, a lawyer in Burundi, a lawyer in Kenya, we must all be able to um, competitively articulate the same issues over the same matter. And then thirdly, let's come together. We already have the East African Law Society to speak on our behalf, but let us see how more we can, how better we can use the East African Law Society, not only to advance the regional integration agenda, but also to advance our own social and professional needs. A cross-section of private sector players maintain that effective tribunals at national levels remain a good bait for business. Negotiations, in my view, could yield something better compared to going to court. Because if you go to court in East Africa, how do you enforce it? You know, those are some of the challenges which you, which, which you see. But if you took a longer time and negotiated and you got what you want, uh, it's a better deal. Even then, the Secretary General of the East African Community, Dr. Richard Sezivera, argues that part of the solutions to trade-related disputes should lie within the formation of diverse enterprises. Businesses in East Africa are East African in outlook, meaning there should be a deliberate effort to employ East Africans to make sure that those who can trade, create value chains across East Africa do so and move just beyond the nation where they are so that we can have real chains and linkages, uh, product linkages within East African countries.